And joining me now is the U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack. Mr. Secretary, thanks for being here. We appreciate your time. It is great to be here, but I tell you, I don't feel like I can compete with the socks or the tie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I got to do something for the viewers. Yeah, so, absolutely. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, the infrastructure bill is now law, right? And and uh, I know you're happy about that. Can you talk about what our state, what Illinois, will see in terms of what we think about as traditional infrastructure in this bill from your world, which is agriculture? Well, first and foremost, it's an expansion of high-speed internet broadband uh, to rural, remote areas in Illinois to make sure that everyone in the state is connected. Uh, the fact is that in too many communities you actually have uh, broadband or internet but the upload or download speeds are not adequate. So this bill also contains the opportunity not only to, to expand uh, uh, opportunities in places that are currently underserved but also those that, are, that don't have adequate uh, upload and download speed. So bottom line is you're going to see everyone have access to meaningful broadband which is incredibly important. Uh, that, that's a very uh, important consideration. There are a number of conservation programs that uh, received additional resources resources that will allow us to go in and repair uh, damage that may have occurred as a result of storms and things of that nature. But the primary goal here for the for us from an infrastructure standpoint is broadband. I would also say that agriculture benefits greatly when we improve roads and bridges, uh, when we improve the lock and dam systems along the Mississippi River. That's really going to allow us to maintain a competitive edge in terms of being able to get product to market more efficiently and less expensively and that means that we can continue to be export leaders. Uh, we had a record year in exports and I think the infrastructure investments are going to make a big difference there as well. Uh, Jean McCarthy has been on the show. She talked about some of the impact that will be in, in the climate area obviously of, of import to, to her, concern to her. So I want to, when I focus in on agriculture for you, I think when a lot of people think of your impact, it's in the rural areas of the state with the farms, that kind of thing. So I'm sort of curious, given the kinds of benefits that you're talking about which will impact the rural areas, how will the cities, the municipalities, get a benefit from the improvements in the rural parts of our state through the infrastructure bill? Well, I mean, if there are a multitude of ways I could answer that question. First of all, I think we're all concerned about the health and welfare of folks. To the extent that you've got broadband access you, uh, in rural areas, you have the ability to have telemedicine. Uh, that means you're going to have healthier citizens, which means you're going to be spending less money on health care, and that benefits all of us. Uh, to the extent that distance learning is, is expanded in rural areas, it means that youngsters are going to be well-educated regardless of where they go to school. That's going to make a difference when these kids potentially leave those rural areas and come to Chicago to work. They're going to be well-trained and well-educated. That's a benefit. Uh, obviously, the ability of our farmers and ranchers to be more precise with what they do on the land uh, in terms of the application of fertilizers and pesticides and herbicides all of that not only impacts the quality of land, but also the quality of water, which eventually has an impact on uh, urban uh, citizens as well. So uh, not to mention the fact that we're uh, obviously going to continue to supply food and fiber and fuel uh, for people uh, in, in cities. So there's a direct connection between what happens in, ur in urban rural areas. I would say also it's important to get the economy of rural America going again because it is a place that disproportionately uh, provides young people to the military. Something you don't think about uh, in terms of the defense of our country, a lot of kids come from these rural areas and they have a value system of giving back. And I think that's an important value system uh, for folks uh, everywhere. Uh, and so to preserving that value system is important. I know the number one reason that brought you to Chicago was doing my show, so thank you for that. But the number two reason <laughs> might be that you visited up in Evanston on Friday morning uh, to talk about a new program up there. So I want to ask you what, what that was all about. Well, the, the, the key here is uh, as school districts help to feed our children every day uh, in schools across America and in Chicago and across the state of Illinois. Uh, youngsters get breakfast and lunch at school and sometimes for many youngsters that may be the only meal that they get during the day. Uh, so we want to continue to make sure that they are well fed. Well, school districts, because of the pandemic and because of the supply chain disruptions that the pandemic has caused, are having a more difficult time accessing all the food that they need uh, in the way that they've accessed it before. So we announced today one and a half billion dollars of additional support for schools to be able to make it a little bit easier for them to purchase if they have to go and purchase from a local producer or from a local distributor that they don't normally do business with. Maybe the cost is a little bit higher. This will give them some additional resources to be able to do that. It's also going to help us better connect local and regional producers 
uh, to these programs so that we create a, a food system that's not just uh, efficient but also resilient. Uh, the Build Back Better plan, which you know is a little bit stalled there uh, in, in the world of the Senate, but as it relates to your world of agriculture, what kind of benefits will, will there be? I know there are there's climate smart agriculture. Are, there are things that you want to see happen there. there. There are enormous benefits in that bill for American agriculture and for all of America. Uh, there are $27 billion allocated to conservation that will allow us to significantly enhance climate smart agricultural practices on the ground. As, as we try to deal with this issue of climate and reducing greenhouse gas emissions and restoring and storing carbon, there's no better place to start that than with American agriculture and, and the lands that are located in rural places. But we need resources to be able to do that. Uh, the, res the, uh, the Build Back Better plan basically provides us resources. It also provides a significant amount of investment in our force uh, for better forest management. We've all been struck by the wildfires that have occurred all across the country, uh, and this will give us the opportunity to reduce the risk, the catastrophic risk of these fires. There's also significant nutrition assistance programs uh, that are funded through the Build Back Better plan, our summer feeding program for youngsters. It's great that we feed kids in school, but what happens during those summer months? We now have a program that basically bridges from the end of the school year to the new school year. Uh, it also will expand significantly the number of kids who are able to have access to free and reduced lunch, uh, a universal free school school meals for uh, schools that particularly elementary schools in in uh, poor areas and this will expand significantly the ability of, of youngsters to get nutrition so uh, a lot of good things for the Department of Agriculture but then of course there are an amazing is an amazing opportunity for climate smart uh, practices across the economy as well as investments in the American family you know as we strengthen the physical infrastructure of the country we have to combine that with a, a commitment to the natural infrastructure which is what conservation and enforced investments in climate smart practices is. And then we also have to, I think, uh, invest in the American family, which is sort of the human infrastructure. When you combine all three of those things, you have a stronger, more competitive America. All right. Secretary Tom Vilsack, uh, Secretary for Agriculture for the United States, thank you so much for being with us uh, and, and for sharing your, your thoughts on all that. Uh, enjoy your holiday season. Likewise, please. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, we will be back right after these words. Stay with us.